Hey everyone and welcome back to part three of our three-part tutorial series covering the mandrels and measuring kits from Monsoon's new Hardline series of Pro Bending Toolkits. Uh, if you missed part one or part two for any reason, I highly recommend you go back and watch those so that you understand everything that's happening in this third part because I'm going to go a little bit faster this time since we have more ground to cover. Uh, in the first two parts we covered um, bending tube on two axes but the same plane. Uh, in the third part of this we're actually going to incorporate these little brackets that come with the measuring kit and also the metal versions of those which come with the mandrels kit. Um, what the bracket allows you to do in the first two parts we actually were always on either uh, we might have been on multiple axes but we always stayed on the same plane. Uh, for this third part we're going to be going from our GPU block over to our CPU block which entails going straight out from the GPU block on the x-axis we're going to hang a left basically onto the y-axis with a 90 degree travel out and then we're going to go a 90 degree down on the z-axis um, you can see right here the bracket that I'm talking about this allows us to change axis um, we're also going to be using these <clears throat> metal brackets for the mandrels you can see here I've installed two of them. Um, they install with the screws that are included. You use one screw and a washer. If you look at the brackets themselves, one of them actually has a threaded insert and the other one doesn't. You're going to thread through, put the screw through the one that doesn't have the threads to the one that does. After you've gotten it just slightly snugged up, just push down with your fingers so that you know the brackets are straight down. Use the included Allen wrench and make sure they're snug down. You're going to see how this uh, works later in the tutorial, but basically what it's going to allow you to do is bend or fixture along two planes. It basically gives you that third axis we talked about. Uh, the first thing we're going to do is go over to our sample setup that we have over there and I'll show you how I got those dimensions. But before we do that, I wanted to give you a quick reminder. If you are using a push-in style fitting like our economy push-in fittings you're only going to be able to measure to the flat but the tube actually when you install it's going to travel down inside the fitting so how we compensate for that is you take a piece of scrap tube or just a piece of tube insert it all the way in just take a piece of tape put it on the tube right up against the fitting and I'm going to take one of my little rulers on the zero side just put it down to the tape and I can see that it's eight millimeters. So I'm just going to make myself a note, eight millimeters. Anytime you're getting dimensions for the leg that touches the fittings, you're going to want to remember to add that eight millimeters in. Uh, I covered it in video one or two, I don't recall, but it's been covered. So if you're not exactly sure, just again, go back and watch video one or two. You should watch them both anyways. All right, we're going to go over and get our dimensions. Alright, for this third leg we're going to go from our uh, GPU block straight out along the x-axis. We're going to do a 90 degree to the y-axis over to our CPU block and then we're going to go straight down along the z-axis to the second port on our CPU block. Uh, in order to get a little room to work I've gone ahead and removed the second tube that we bent and I've set up my measuring tools. I used the 90 degree bracket. I went ahead and doubled up on two of the shorter rulers to give me the space I need. Uh, one thing you want to be careful of when you're measuring is any offsets. Um, I should have actually put this on the other side but I, in my mind I can go ahead and compensate for that three millimeters. Um, I'm going from the center of the GPU port to the center of the CPU port. I'm going to make one very slight adjustment by going back a few degrees, or excuse me, a few millimeters. Make sure you use those washers, it makes it a lot easier. I'm going to use the included right angle to double check and make sure I'm 
where I want to be. I am. I'm at 90 degrees. Next up, the building board. All right, we're back at our building board. We've got our dimensions out of our case, so we know these are numbers for our actual installation. Um, first thing I'm going to do is make myself a little sketch like you see me do in the first two videos to transfer my numbers over. Um, I just do this so that I can keep everything straight in my head. Uh, the first leg over is from the GPU block out, and then the second leg turns towards the CPU block, and then we've got the Z-axis which goes straight down, but uh, just for the sake of my dimensions I'm going to make a little angle line like that. Uh, as I mentioned, you should always try and set up with the zeros on your fittings. Uh, in this case I actually got it backwards, so I'm going to have to do a little bit of math in my head, but it's not a big deal. Uh, I'm going to measure to the outside edge of this ruler, just always keep in mind the path that you're traveling, because the rulers themselves are three millimeters thick. So all I have to do is look at the end, do my little math, and it's 147. And then from this leg over, it's 117 from here to here, and I measured along the inside edge, so that's good. So it's 117. And then for the Z-axis leg, I went ahead and combined two of the 100 millimeter rulers, like I showed you in the earlier videos, so that I could get 140 millimeters, which is what I needed for this particular segment. And starting on my zero and working up, I can see that I'm at 96 millimeters. After I've got those dimensions, I can go ahead and free up one of my longer rules, so I've got something to... use for my lines and just set this aside for now. I've already gone ahead and used my right angle to make my start. Um, I'm going to use my ruler to just extend those lines out. Thing you need to be aware of when you're um, measuring in your case, you'll have your two path all planned out and measured out. Sometimes when you get to your building board, you may need to actually bend the bends in reverse. Um, I'm actually doing that in this case because uh, in the first two videos, when I went out the actual direction, I tended to be not able to see what I was doing without leaning over, and that blocks the view. So I'm going to try and do this a little bit upside down for myself just so you can see what we're doing. Um, the first leg I'm going to bend is this leg right here, and to, that, to do that we're going to use our 90 degree mandrel, just like you saw in the other videos. I'm putting the center line right on my lines. Uh, the edge of this is actually your center line. If you look at a piece of tube installed there, that's the nice thing about the mandrels and the measuring kit is that they actually work together to give you center lines. Um, again, that's covered in the first and second videos. I'm going to go ahead and mount this down on my workbench. Making sure that it's right on those center lines. I'm going to use the long screws that are supplied in the kit. I'm using a driver, but if you don't have one, you can use a screwdriver. It's not a big deal. holes in the mandrels are also very slightly oversized, so if you get a little shifting while you're doing it, you can adjust them. You don't have to put it down there forever. <clears throat> what I'm going to, the next thing I'm going to do is I know that my dimension is 147 millimeters. So I'm going to take my zero line, put it right there. Come out to 147 millimeters. I'm actually going to give myself uh, the three extra millimeters and go to 150. Uh, as I mentioned in the other videos, it's not a bad thing to have a few extra millimeters, you know, three to five extra millimeters. In case you need to, if you've measured incorrectly, it's better to have the part, the tube be just, you know, a few millimeters too long that you can go back and in, in the space of a minute using the uh, miter boxes, just trim a little bit off the tube. You know, if it's too short, you get to start over again. So that gives me the dimension for that first leg. Um, 
What I'm going to do now is go over and bend that, and I'll be back in a minute. Okay, we've got our first bend in, which was our 147 millimeter dimension. Uh, the next thing I'm going to do is uh, talk to you again about the center lines. Um, although you can bend in both directions simultaneously, I tend to like to, if possible, do my first bend, like you've seen here, and then use it. Use the upright mounted mandrel as a fixture to hold it in. So what I need to do, since we use center lines, is get this dimension right here, the 117 millimeters. I'm going to start at the zero here. And go out one, 117 millimeters. Just make a tick mark along here that I can see. And because we use center lines, these two points right here are actually the center line of the tube. So if I line my mandrel up so that it splits that, and it's right on the line, that's actually the center line for that build. When you mount the mandrels upright, you're going to want to use the shorter screws that are included. These are the ones you'd normally mount the mandrels with, and the shorter screws are the ones you'll mount if you're using the brackets to go upright. Again, the screws are slightly oversized, so if you need to make adjustments, you can. That looks pretty good. And away we go. Just going to fine tune a little bit. I like the way that looks. Take my other screw. All right. What I'm going to do next is heat the tube. You're kind of getting the idea here what happens now. This actually will lock this Z-bend, which is, or actually it's not the Z-bend, but it'll actually lock it upright so it's absolutely perpendicular to the building board. And when I make my next bend, it'll give me my distance. So what I'm going to do for that one, this was our 117 millimeter leg, so this is going to be our 96 millimeter leg. So again, I just make my measurements. Right there's 96, but I'm going to actually give myself that extra 4 millimeters just in case I've mismeasured. I can always come back and cut it, like I've mentioned. That's where the tube's going to end. The next thing I'm going to do is make myself a little mark midway along here. If you haven't watched our bending video, the heat gun video, I suggest you go and watch it because it'll cover what I'm doing with the marks. Alright, I'll be back in a second after I make this next bend. Actually, before I went and made the bend, I wanted to show you one other thing I did. I, uh, because the mandrels, the way they're designed with the center line feature, you can actually give yourself a very good estimate of where your bend is going to end up. And I used that feature and I cut off the excess tube. Um, it makes it a little easier to insert the silicone insert that you're going to use for bending. And it just makes it a little easier to handle the tube. Um, one other thing, the centerline system on the mandrels actually holds the tube two millimeters from that face right there. So if it's mounted flat, the tube's actually two, two millimeters off your building board. The right angles that are included will act as shims for that. So when I'm making the second bend, what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually heat my tube when I get back over here, I'm going to shove it into this mandrel real quick. That holds it upright, and then I'm going to make my bend. And this will keep that axis of the tube perpendicular to my building board. And because we're using center lines, everything is going to be perpendicular or 90 the way it's supposed to be. The little shim there isn't absolutely necessary because the mandrels tend to be self-centering, but I just put it there to remind myself. All right, now we're going to go make the bend. All right, when well, we let that cool off, This actually kind of brings uh, sort of the beauty of the mandrel system to the forefront where you can recognize it because not only do they allow you to get really precise bends, just perfect beautiful bends, but they also allow you to get them exactly where you want them. I don't know if it'll show up in the camera, but this is our center line right here for this Z axis. That's this axis right here, the 90, uh, actually the 147. Um, 
but it's dead center down the center of that tube. And then if you look right here, this axis is right down the dead center line, and then this axis is right down the dead center line. So not only do they allow you to get beautiful bends, but you're also going to get them exactly where you want along the, the legs of your tube. Uh, beautiful bends, if, if you're able to free bend around, you know, found objects around the home, or if you're using one of those little adjusto guys or whatever, they work nice, but they're not going to allow you to get the bends exactly where you want them, so everything is just absolutely perfect. Um, you can use the mandrels mounted upright to do bends. Uh, you can do it with the 360. You'd actually heat the tube, put it in there, and then while it's still hot, use the 360 mandrel to make that bend. Um, I try to avoid that wherever possible just because it's kind of a pain in the butt. I like to make the first bend like you saw and then set up for the second bend. I think that's actually cool enough now. Wipe my pencil marks off. The last step we're going to do on this is actually install a piece of tape. If you've watched the video that we have on our miter box for cutting, you'll understand what I'm doing, or if you've watched the earlier videos. Uh, what this allows me to do is actually just make a mark where I'm going to cut my tube, and of course my pencil's wandered off. And you take your eyes off of it for a second and it's gone. Well, I'm going to find my pencil and make my mark and go do that cut. And then when we come back, you'll actually get to see how it looks installed. And there you have it. Uh, perfectly bent runs of tube, uh, thanks to the mandrels and the measuring kit. Um, some of my fittings are in there actually a little crooked because I tapped the holes in the acrylic by hand. But you still get the idea that the uh, mandrels are great for bending and they're great for using as fixtures on your building board to get the bins exactly where you want them. Uh, I'm probably going to do a few more videos that show you how to do the add 45s if you want to use the brackets for 45s. And I'm going to do one on the 360 because I get a lot of questions from guys asking me what the 360 degree mandrel does. Um, for now you guys are all set. Happy New Year!